That's my sister's house. I'm almost sure of it. This is, yes, this is the right address. She could be inside. Could we go and see? Do I seem a little nervous? I am. I really don't know what to expect. I'd like you to be there with me, if you're willing. Or we could leave, I suppose. We really don't have time to pay a visit, do we? Maybe we should go. Will she even know who I am? Does she even know I exist? My sister. That sounds very strange. Sister. Sister. Hmm. Oh, now I'm babbling. Maybe we should go. Let's go. Let, let's just go. Uh, hello? Hey, you have linens to wash? I charge three bits on a bundle. You won't find better. And don't trust what that Natalia woman tells you either. She's foreign and she'll rob you blind. I'm not here to have any wash done. <laughs> uh, my name's Alistair. I'm... Well, this may sound sort of strange, but... Are you called Dana? If so, I suppose I'm your brother. My what? I am Goldana, yes. How do you know my name? What kind of tomfoolery are you folk up to? Look, our mother, she worked as a servant in Redcliffe Castle a long time ago before she died. D do you know about that? She... You! I knew it! They told me you was dead. They told me the babe was dead along with mother, but I knew they was lying. They told you I was dead? Who? Who told you that? Them's at the castle. I told them the babe was the king's and they said he was dead. Gave me a coin to shut my mouth and sent me on my way. I knew it. I'm sorry, I didn't know that. The babe didn't die. I'm him. I'm your brother. Ugh, for all the good it does me. You killed mother, you did. And I've had to scrape by all this time. That coin didn't last long, and when I went back, they ran me off. And who in the maker's name are you? Some elf to follow him about and carry his riches for him? Hey, don't speak to her that way. She's my friend and a Grey Warden, just like me. Oh, I see. A prince and a Grey Warden, too. Well, who am I to think poorly of someone so high and mighty compared to me? I don't know you, boy. Your royal father forced himself on my mother and took her away from me. And what do I got to show for it? Nothing. They tricked me good. I should have told everyone. I got five mouths to feed. And unless you can help with that, I got less than no use for you. I... I'm sorry, I don't know what to say. Well, he found it. And what good is that to me? None, that's what. Unless he can see to it that his family lives as it should. I suppose maybe I could give her some money for my nieces and nephews. Fifteen sovereigns, maybe? Would you let me give her that? Then here, Goldana, take this money. I know it's not much, but... You, a prince, marching in here with your fancy armour and such, and this is all you got to offer? You must think I'm very stupid. No, wait, I, I don't think that at all. I, I want to help, if I can. You want to help? You go to whatever high and mighty folks you run with, and you tell them you've got nephews and nieces that aren't living as they've a right to. You do that! Yes, it really seems that way, doesn't it? I wasn't expecting my sister to be so... I'm starting to wonder why I came. I don't know why you came either, or what you expected to find. But it isn't here. Now get out of my house, the both of you. I agree. Let's get out of here. Well, that was not what I expected, to put it lightly. I'm sorry I gave her any money at all. This is the family I've been wondering about all my life? That gold-digging Harridan? I can't believe it. I... I guess I was expecting her to accept me without question. Isn't that what family is supposed to do? 
I... I feel like a complete idiot. Such as? The only person who ever cared about me was Duncan, and he's gone. I... thank you. I'm glad you came with me. Let's just go. I don't want to talk about this anymore. I think I owe you an explanation for what happened earlier. You should know that something happened to me at the tower before you came along. Remember my apprentice, Petra. She encountered a demon in the tower. It would have killed her had I not intervened. I saved her life that day, but I did not survive that encounter with the demon. Let me explain fully. I engaged a very powerful demon to rescue Petra. It sapped me of all my energy and will and left me drained. It took everything I had to defeat it. And when I was done, I no longer had the strength to keep my heart beating. I remember my life ebbing away. Everything receded from me. Sound, light. I remember being enveloped in complete, impenetrable darkness. And then I sensed a presence enfolding me and cradling me, whispering quietly to me. The sensation is impossible to describe. I was being held back firmly but gently as a mother would a child eager to slip from her grasp. I felt life and warmth flowing through my veins again. I began to be aware of small sounds and the discomfort of my hip pressing into the cold stone of the tower floor. The Fade contained spirits both benevolent and malicious. The benevolent spirits seldom make themselves known, because they want nothing from mortals, unlike the demons. It was one of these spirits that saved me. Without it, I would be dead. And it has not left me. It is with me, even now, bonded to me. You see, I am supposed to be dead. It is the spirit that is keeping me in this world. And this is not the way of things. Perhaps the spirit did not expect this, but it is weakening gradually. I am living on borrowed time. I do not know. I can feel when the spirit weakens, so I should have fair warning. But come, let us not talk about this. There is time yet. What's on your mind? I have always had an affinity for the spirits of the Fade. As a child, I never feared my dreams because I knew they were there. I've always been able to feel the spirits, even if I never saw them. And as I nurtured my talent in the circle, I became more sensitive. I began to notice every time I was in the Fade, whether it was in a dream or in magical practice, that I was being watched. I suppose they must. It is these benevolent spirits that create our dream worlds in the Fade. Sometimes I would see it, a glowing, nebulous form. Most times I would just feel its presence, gentle and comforting, but somehow alien. I think it is a spirit of faith. They have never been seen before, and perhaps I am wrong but something tells me I'm not. It always felt like the same entity. This one spirit was curious about me and was guarding me, for want of a better word. There were times when I was in the Fade that it seemed to stretch forth to shield me, keeping me safe. And I think it gave me strength in my most terrible battles, Ostagar being one of them. I don't know why I was chosen. 
Perhaps it knew that there was something more that lay in store for me. I like to think that I was given a rare chance, and I'm going to make the best of the time so generously given to me. I will not lie motionless in a bed with coverlets up to my chin, waiting for death to claim me. That is not the death for me. And so I will fight alongside the Grey Warden and help prepare her for the task that is yet before her. So you had better listen to me, because I swear, if I should fall before the end and you don't seem to be doing things properly, I'll get up again to give you a good finger-wagging. You know, I think you'll be all right, even without my help. interesting and draining. I called forth the spirit that sustains me so that it could lend us aid. I did not realize it would take this much out of me. It seemed a good idea at the time, if a little rash. I think it may have weakened the spirit a little. Anyway, I feel quite all right now. And it seems that my little trick could be useful in a pinch. I promise I'll be careful. And thank you. Your concern is touching. Your desire is my command. Well, we're not exactly alone. What did you have in mind? Oh! <laughs> you want to... right now? Well... Who am I to refuse? Step right, make us breath. Oh, beg your pardon, friend, you uh, startled me a bit. You've uh, heard of me? Where is my sword? I, uh, I don't know what you mean, sir. I don't have it. I swear by Andraste's knickers. I sold it on the way here. It's true. Maker, please, you have to believe me. If I had it, I'd give it to you. I sold it to a dwarf in Redcliffe, name of Dwin. He's the one who has the sword, I promise you. Said he was a collector. We'll see. Vieta, this land is held in trust for the sovereign dwarven kings. I cannot allow entry at this time. King Loghain demands the allegiance of the Desher, or Lords, or whatever you call them in your assembly. I am his appointed messenger. I don't care if you're the King's wiper. Orzammar will have none but its own until our throne is settled. They hide because they are dwarves. I would challenge any race to fare as well. Our King is dead. Endrin I do can return to the stone not three weeks ago. The assembly has gone through a dozen votes without agreeing on a successor. If it is not settled soon, we risk a civil war. The Wardens killed King Caelan and nearly doomed Ferelden. They're sworn enemies of King Loghain. Well, that is the royal seal. That means only the assembly is authorized to address it. Grey Warden, you may pass. You're letting in a traitor? And a foreigner? In the name of King Loghain, I demand that you execute this stain on the honor of Ferelden. You... you'll hear of this. King Loghain will see you quartered. You are free to enter Orzammar, Grey Warden. Though I don't know what help you will find.
It is the Assembly who makes a king, and a king who nominates his successor. None of it is carried in the blood. Or, as now, when someone tries using the Assembly to pull a coup. Who's to say what my father said in his final hours, when the usurper Haramont was the only one by his side? I'll have you thrown in prison. You've bitten off more than you can chew! Handlers, separate these dashers in the Diamond Quarter. I will not have Balin incite a riot. You not speak that way about the man who should be king! Your mind has gone to dust if you think we would pass such a writ. Half our houses would go broke without the surface trade. The proposal is only effective until we have a king to ensure we are respected by the surfacers. Leaving you conveniently positioned to take over all contracts. I'll see your head on a pike first. Desher's lords and ladies of the assembly, I've already doubled the guard to prevent violence. Must I summon more? Steward Bandalore, Balin's sympathizers are tying our hands with trivialities. They may as well open us to the sky. I suggest we put the matter to a vote. And I suggest you have a taste of my family's mace. Enough! The assembly is in recess until the members can regain control of their emotions. <laughs>